fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World, and we're back in Brazil. And today we're going to talk about are some of the mistakes tourists make when they come to Brazil, whether it's their first time here or maybe their 15th visit to Brazil, because these things do happen. And I think one mistake tourists make when they come here is they, they don't hang out with the Brazilians, and you really should, because the Brazilians are really the reason why Brazil is so fantastic, because they're so friendly, they're so energetic, they're so outgoing, you're gonna have a great time with them. Whether you're dancing the night away, you're having some chapinhos, some little beers with them, going out to eat, hitting the beach, I mean, there's so many fun times you can have with the locals here, and that's what you gotta love. And if you don't take the time to meet locals when you're here, sitting down having a beer, having a chat, you're really missing out. And you will get really close to the Brazilians when you're here. And I don't just mean close as in, like, my heart is very close to yours, I also mean, physically close to the Brazilians because literally this is one of those places that they hug you and kiss you when they see you and arms around you and very little um, personal space. So if you're not ready for a, not a lot of personal space, you got to be ready for that when you come here. So don't make that mistake. All right. And when you do meet those Brazilians, another mistake I see tourists make it too many times is drinking not really, really cold beer. Like you'll see beer, it's bem gelagina, like really, really cold. Like, honestly, you got to be careful because I'll see tourists that'll get a beer and they'll be in the big glass bottles or in a can and they'll grab it with their hand and the beer actually freezes inside the container. Okay, that's how cold it is. So you got to be careful. So hold your beer right. But if the beer isn't ice cold, you can literally tell them, hey, this beer isn't cold enough and they'll get you a new one. So don't make the mistake of not drinking super ice cold beer when you're here in Brazil, whether it's Brahma or Skoll or whatever. And when you're drinking a lot of beer, you're probably going to visit the restroom. And I, I got to tell you this mistake that tourists make when they come to Brazil. And that is they throw the toilet paper in the toilet. Look, a lot of places in Brazil, the pipes for the bathrooms cannot handle toilet paper. That means when you wipe, it goes in the bin next to the toilet. It does not go into the toilet because believe me, you don't want that stuff getting stuck and it coming back up. That is not a fun experience. Okay, so remember, TP goes in the bin next door. And when you're in the bathroom, um, don't make the mistake of thinking that they're trying to kill you with the electric shower. Because yes, in some parts of Brazil, you will see electric showers where there literally is a cord coming from the shower plugged into the wall next to the shower. That's how you get the hot water. Okay, so don't worry. Don't freak out. Don't make the mistake that your friend is trying to kill you because they're not. They want to have a good time with you. But do be aware of that. Now, another mistake I see tourists make is when they come to Brazil, this is anywhere in Brazil, is they're not bringing bug spray and they're not bringing sunblock. Like, I used sunblock yesterday. Like, I used so much that my, my chest hair was turning green and I still got a lot of sun. And you want to have sun protection as much as you can. Bring that SPF 50, have your hats, all kinds of stuff. And you can get that when you're here, which is nice. It's actually a pretty fair price when you buy sunblock here in Brazil, but you want to make sure you have that. But for me, it's the bug spray. Because the bugs in Brazil, whether you're in the north, you're in the south, you're in the east, wherever you are in Brazil, the bugs are insane, okay? So make sure you bring some bug spray. We have the wristbands. We have the bug spray. We have the wipes. We have it all. And my ankles still look like someone just totally chewed on them, okay? So be aware that you can do what you want. You can try your best, but the bugs will still get you. But really, if you don't have the things, I remember walking with one of those bracelets on in the Pantanal and it literally, there was a bubble of bugs around me because they, they wouldn't come near where it was. And I could see every day how the power for the bracelet got less and less because the bubble went from like here to here to I'm like, okay, I need to <laughs> get a new one. So do be aware of that when you're here. And I think another thing that's really important is uh, when you're coming to Brazil, I see people make the mis mis mistake is they, they bring like their full bathing suit. Look, look, I got to tell you now, don't make the mistake of bringing your least revealing bathing suit. You need to bring your most revealing bathing suit when you come to Brazil. Because yes, they have their micro bikinis here and you could do that too. But what I love about going to the beach in Brazil is there's no body shaming. There's no worrying about how you feel. It's like, look, if you want to wear your Speedo, wear your Speedo. You want to wear your song and wear your song. You can, you can wear whatever you want to the beach, but just know it's okay to be a little bit more revealing than you have at your usual local pool, okay? Because honestly, modesty isn't really a thing here when it comes to the beach. Now, another mistake I see tourists make when it comes to visiting Brazil is they get scared away from visiting Brazil because they hear all this horrible news. Oh, the favelas and, the, and all the robberies and the Zika and all this kind of stuff. It's horrible. I should never go there. It's not safe. Don't go. Don't go. Because honestly, I feel like the news has a very much anti-Brazil bias. I know in 2016 and 2018, we came to visit before major world like, uh, sporting events specifically because the news was so anti-Brazil, how bad it was. I'm like, look, we bring our kids here all the time. 
It's a fantastic country to go to. The people are wonderful. The food is great. And don't let the news keep you from coming here and visiting. Now, I'm also going to say another mistake tours do make is when they come and they think, oh, everything will be fine. You do have to take your safety seriously when you are here. Like Rio, there are parts you don't go to, just like in any city, okay? You do need to be more careful. That's why if you want to see a mistake tours make that put themselves in kind of more danger is they wear their bling. They have their fancy wedding rings or fancy washes, fancy clothes. No, you don't bring the you don't bring the bling when you're here. You don't bring the fancy stuff. You definitely dress down when you come here. Throw in some Bermuda shorts, some t-shirts, and some flip-flops. You're gonna look like a local when you're here, and that'll make you a lot safer when you are here in case anything does happen. Now, another mistake I see tourists make when they come to Brazil is they think, oh. Well, it's South America, so they speak Spanish, and people just start speaking Spanish with the Brazilians thinking they'll understand. That is a big mistake. They One, they speak Portuguese here in Brazil, not Spanish, and they're not the same language. Now, if you speak Spanish, you'll probably be able to read the menu, but don't think the locals will understand you if you start speaking Spanish. It, it doesn't work that way, okay? It is a different language. And another mistake people have is thinking that, oh, well, I'm going as a tourist. All the tourist places will have everything in English for me. That is another mistake. Don't expect to find English all over. Yeah, if you're in Rio and Sao Paulo, tourist sites, yeah, there'll be some English stuff. But you're coming out to the, the Pernambuco, or you're going to be Maceo, or Joa Pessoa, you're going to Pantanal, like, eh, there's not going to be much in English, okay? So that's why it's important. Learn at least a few words when you come here. Whether, even if it's just obrigado, which is thank you, or por favor, which is please, hola, which is hello, like, little things like that can go a long way. And even if you're having trouble communicating, one thing I think is important and a mistake I see people make when they come here is they don't realize how much Brazilians really use their hands when they talk. And they have all kinds of great signs and hand gestures that they do use. But tourists sometimes mess it up. Like you don't do the okay sign or the okay sign, whichever way, because this is worse than the middle finger. All right. So just stick the thumbs up. That's it. It's good. Thumbs up. It's bad. Thumbs down. That's your best way to do it. And there's all kinds of things. You'll see like this one's like, hey, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. You'll see, oh, Corona. Corona is like, oh, that guy's getting cheated on. That's that's another thing there. If something's really good, they'll rub their ear like it's a diamond ring. Oh, yeah, that's really good. Or it's really expensive. If you go by a restaurant and you're like looking to see if they have a spot and they do this, it means it's totally full. If they do this, it's just full. But this is like super full. So there's all kinds of different gestures they have. We actually have videos talking about it. So I'll let you watch that video to help you know all the funny gestures you should do. Like, good luck. And ones you shouldn't do, like the okay sign, okay? The only other thing I think is important for tourists to realize is when you come to Brazil, Rio is not the only place that has carnival. Like, I'm so surprised. You go, oh, are you going to Rio for carnival? I'm like, well, one, carnival is only at a certain time of the year. You know, it's, you know, Mardi Gras time, you know, before Easter time. That's when it happens. It's not all year round. And it's not just in Rio. I've been all over Brazil during carnival season. I've had it in Sao Paulo. I've had it up in you know, Pernambuco. I've had it up in Maceo. I've had it at a lot of different places. And it's really fun. And the thing is, it's different everywhere you go. Some places it has all the costumes. Some places just loud music. Sometimes it's parades down the streets in small towns. Carnival is throughout the country. So if you're coming to Brazil during carnival, don't think you only can go to Rio to enjoy it. You can enjoy it all over the country. And you can watch the carnival parade floats on TV in Rio. Okay, from Rio, so you have that. Now, another thing people like to do when they come to Brazil is they want to go to the Amazon rainforest and see all the animals. And that's actually a mistake I have to tell you is if you go to the Amazon, you don't really see a lot of animals because there's so much covering and the animals don't come out. So you don't see a lot of the animals. You might see the dolphins in the Amazon River. That's kind of cool. But if you really want to see the animals, you're better off going to the swamps, swampland in the Pantanal where you literally float with piranhas and float with jacares, you know, alligators. You can do that and be much more up close with the animals there than you can the Amazon, which which blows my mind because you see all the movies. They're all like, we're seeing the animals in the Amazon. I'm like, well, actually, if you want to see the animals, Go down Mato Grosso do Sul, go to Pantanal, you'll see them there. Go do some ecotourism in Bonito. You'll have a better time, see a lot of more nature, and see a lot more animals, too. Now, let's look at some of the food mistakes that tourists make when they come here to Brazil. One thing I, I always notice is when you go around the world, if there's a Brazilian restaurant, it's usually a Brazilian steakhouse or a rodízio. And people make the mistake that they think they have to keep eating the whole time. I go to a number of rodizios here in Brazil and I'll see tourists there and they just keep eating and look so miserable. And they make the mistake of realizing that, look, you actually can stop them when you put the green up on there because they give you a thing. It's green and red. Green means keep feeding me until I pop. Red is I surrender. I'm a failure. And it's okay to turn it to red to take a pause. You could turn it to green again and get more food again. But just know that 
you don't have to keep eating everything that comes by. You can say no, and you can turn it to red, all right? So know that, because I've seen some serious tourists that look like they're going to die from all the food. Like, uh, oh, why do they keep bringing me more? Just, just turn it over to red, all right? Now, another food mistake I want you to know about are consumption cards. So if you're going to a club, or if you're going to a cafeteria kind of food setting, or if you're going, like, on the highway and you're going to stop at, like, a rest stop area, you'll get a card when you go in. Do not lose that card because that card is what you pay with. And so you buy all your stuff through the night. And then when you want to leave, that's when they check out. That's what you pay at the end. OK, and if you lose your consumption card, it's not like they're going to be like, oh, you lost it. It's OK. You can leave. Oh, no, 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 no. There's usually a huge fee if you lose it. So do not do that. And when you go into places, you're going to need to take one for everybody. So have one. And the thing is. I know when we go, usually we all four of us will have the consumption card, but I'll just put everything on mine. And so when we go out, they all have zero reals on their bill. I pay everything and then we go. But honestly, don't lose that consumption card, especially at the clubs in Sao Paulo. I'm just gonna leave that one right there. Now in more of a healthier mistake people make, well, I guess it's not a healthier mistake because they make this mistake, is people not trying all the different fruits and juices that they have here in Brazil. Cause there's so many fruits you've never even heard of. Do, do you know, you know, cashews, the nut, it's actually on a fruit, and they may use that fruit to make a juice. Yes, you can have cashew juice. You can have papaya that's un like unbelievable papaya. Avocados that you've never seen so big in your life, and they're not like $9 either. Like, there's so many great fruits here, but people kind of like skip away. Like, I'll have the orange juice because I know that. No, no, have the, the, the maracuja, the passion fruit juice. Have the cashew juice. Have all the melon juices. Oh my God, the fruits here, the fruit smoothies you can have. You'll see how the acai, oh my gosh, you think it's just some super fruit I saw on the internet. No, they eat it here and it's wonderful. So not eating the fruit is a huge mistake when you're here. And another eating mistake I see people make is they kind of look down on people that are sitting at plastic tables and plastic chairs, having beers and having little salgados, little like little beer snacks, like pau de queijo, which is like cheese bread or cochin de frango, which is a like shredded chicken inside of um, uh, mashed potatoes and then fried. There's all kinds of great little treats you can have, but just sitting outside with your friends, drinking a beer, that's the best way to make friends in Brazil, best way to meet people. And even good restaurants will have you sit outside in cheap chairs and enjoy yourself. So don't look down on that. Cause that's one thing I saw on Rio. People were like, well, I'm not going to eat there. They have plastic chairs. I'm like, so their food looks fantastic. They got cold beer. What more do you want? And wherever you are in Brazil, another mistake I see tourists make is they get bashful when it comes to dancing. Look, you're going to hear a lot of music and a lot of different styles of music throughout Brazil. And people will get up and start dancing. And I'm not just talking like, you know, TikTok dancer people. No, I'm talking from little kids to retirees. Everybody gets out and dances, at least for a little bit. And if you're not dancing, you're missing out. So whether you're going to a show, you're going to a club, you're going to a restaurant, you're going out with friends, you're hitting the beach. It's okay to get a little bit of dancing in when you're here because that's part of the culture here. It's just the music just flows through you. And if you're trying to be too stuffy, I don't dance well you're really making a mistake here in brazil and i, I think a mistake that kind of goes along that way is sometimes people make a mistake of thinking caipuera is people fighting or people dancing they're not really sure you know if you're in bahia or if you're in any kind of tourist place you'll see people doing caipuera it's it looks like a dance it looks like it's fighting it's kind of a combination of everything actually the history of it is it was a dance that they learned to teach themselves how to fight with it so it has a nice kind of mix to it but it's one of those things that people kind of watch as a tourist going, that's kind of cool. And they'll spin their feet around and almost get shit, all kinds of stuff. But you have to realize if you're going to Bahia, you're going to the Northeast, you can take classes for that when you're there. You can take a day class while you're on vac vacation and learn some of the moves. And it's kind of a fun thing to do. So don't skip out on it. Don't think it's just something to watch as a tourist from afar. You can do it yourself, okay? Now, two, another couple of mistakes I see tourists make has to do with their mobile phone. Um, I'm, yeah, yeah, you got to get your mobile phone plan. But one is they think they're going to have their phone connection throughout the country. Brazil is a huge country. And there's be a lot of times where you have absolutely no signal. So make sure you're downloading your maps, whether you have maps.me or whatever app you like to have. Download the maps, the directions you're going to be driving, whatever. You want to have that in your phone because you're not always going to have a signal, okay? And if you're looking for apps, you really should download. I'd say one mistake people make is not downloading WhatsApp. WhatsApp is it's an app that you can text with, you can call with, you can do video calls with. And honestly, people seem to use that more than their actual mobile phone service, okay? So you want to have a WhatsApp because your taxi or your Uber driver, or your hotel might only have a WhatsApp number. 
you need to do that. And you can get that with your phone number from back home, no problem. So make sure you download that one. Another app to make sure you have is Uber. So you can share, you know, you can get ride shares and Uber is very helpful in bigger cities in Brazil because then you know who's coming and it's all tracked. And that makes it for a safer trip than grabbing a random taxi off the road. So moving on with our mistakes, I've actually become a little bit more comfortable in my skin here with a nice light t-shirt. I've got my, my sandals on. I got my Bermuda shorts on. I'm more ready for Brazil right now. And I think time to go into another mistake that tourists make when they come to Brazil when they're getting comfortable is really um, thinking that those bus rides around the country will be kind of short. Because a lot of tourists don't realize how big Brazil really is. I mean, like the states of Brazil are the sizes of countries, okay? If you're looking at Europe, and you have to realize those bus rides can be very long. And also there can be a big difference in the type of bus ride you have. So remember, you kind of pay for what you're gonna get. So you might wanna take the executive bus from Sao Paulo to Rio instead of the cheap one, because my goodness, your back will know the difference. And when you're driving around the country on those buses or flying around, Goal Airline, I like them, we've flown with them a lot. When you're going around, you'll notice that one of the mistakes that tourists make when they come here is really, truly a mistake. And that is thinking that Brazil is just one homogenous country. It's not the people, the vibe, the culture, the food, the accent. It's different in different parts of the country. You go to Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo is a city of immigrants, 25 million people. You get great Japanese food there. You get great Lebanese food there, great Italian food there. If you go to the Northeast, or go to Bahia, go to Salvador, and you get carajé when you're there. It's like a bean made baked potato looking thing, taco stuff with the shrimp in there. Oh my God, it's so good. You go to the South, you go to Santa Catarina and the gauchos there, the, the cowboys and all the beef that's down there. I mean, the food, the people, how they act, how they talk, it's so different all over. You really get like different vacations depending where you're going in Brazil. That's why usually when we visit Brazil, we like to mix it up. Oh, we'll go to Iguazu and go see that. And we'll go to, you know, Sao Paulo, hit up Rio. Then maybe we'll go to Salvador, you know, and, and check that. Or maybe the next time we'll go up to Recife and Olinda and enjoy those, the fun up there. It's even more relaxing, okay? So don't think Brazil is just one thing that's all the same everywhere. It's not. Now, regardless of where you go in Brazil, another tourist mistake people have has to do with tipping. And you don't have to tip when you go to restaurants in Brazil. The service charge is already included, so you don't have to worry about that. So that's where I've seen some tourists who weren't sure what to do, so they make the mistake of maybe we worried that they didn't tip or they maybe they do tip. You don't have to tip at restaurants because it is included. So restaurants, you're not tipping. However, if you're going to do tours, then you're probably going to tip your tour guide when you do tours. So that's a little different. Remember, restaurants, bars, it's included. If you're going to have guides, then you can tip them. Um, another thing I would say is when you're looking at tours, specific a mistake I see people make is going on favela tours. You know, I've seen this a lot in Rio. I've seen this in Sao Paulo where people are like, oh, we're going to take people into the favela so they can see what it's like in the, in the dangerous favelas. And, and basically what they do is they dehumanize the people that live there. Those are normal everyday people that live there. Do you go through different parts of your town going, oh, look at them. Look what they have. Oh, look what they don't have. What are they doing there? That's why I think it's a mistake to do the favela tours. You can do them. Some people really enjoy them. But that's one thing. I just don't like how it dehumanizes people when they take them on these favela tours. Like it's a zoo instead of where people live that are trying to get by and try to get through this world. Okay. Now, another don't I, I think it's just a general one for Brazil in, in general. It's just, just don't drive. Like the driving here isn't fun with the potholes and the traffic. Oh my God, the traffic is insane. The distances, the speed bumps that literally will break the axle of your car and your neck if you hit them too fast. I mean, it's not really a fun thing to do. So if you can avoid the drive when you come to Brazil, that's quite helpful. But if you can't avoid the driving and you have to drive, another mistake I see tourists make is they don't pay off the parking guy. You'll say, well, it's free parking. I don't have to pay the guy that comes up to me to, to watch the car. Oh, oh yes, you do because that guy is watching your car. And if you don't pay, I guarantee something will happen to your car. Because if you do pay him, I can just say this, it's less likely that something will happen to your car. So if you're in one of the cities, you find a place to park and a guy comes up, hey, yo, don't you gotta give me some money. Give him a couple of reals, two reals, five reals, whatever, just so that he's watching your car. So there's a better chance that nothing bad happens to it. Cause you don't, well, I warned you. And speaking of cash, I think another thing is important. Tourists like to just get money wherever they see an ATM. I think that's a mistake here in Brazil. If you're going to take money out of an ATM, go inside of the bank to get your money out. Don't use the ATM right outside the bank that's outside or in the mall or out and, out and about. Go inside the bank. Remember, that might mean just a bank hours that's open. That's when you want to take your cash out because though credit cards literally are accepted all over Brazil, there'll be a few places that are just cash 
and I'll be surprised which places are just cash and which places actually take card. It's kind of funny, but it's a good idea to have some reals in your pocket just in case, whether it is to pay the parking guy or to grab a little snack or to take the ferry to come out in Iguape, you know, to Gujere. I mean, it's weird how some things are actually cash based. So do have that. Another tourist mistake, which is sometimes kind of funny to see, um, but when you're looking and you're doing your research on where you're gonna stay, um, I will tell you this, don't make the mistake of thinking a motel is a hotel in Brazil, okay? A motel is a temporary romantic relationship accommodation place because a lot of people live with their parents until their 30s, right? And so you gotta have some private time somewhere and even the parents might need some private time somewhere too. That's for the motels, okay? Normal tourists, you don't stay at the motel. Unless you meet somebody special, then yes, you could go to the motel because your hotel might not be cool with an extra guest. So do be aware of that one. And then I want to finish off with this one. One mistake you should never make when you come to Brazil is disrespecting rice and beans because you will have rice and beans a lot when you're here. A rose e Now the rice is usually just rice. Sometimes you get some coconut in there. That's nice. But the beans, the feijão, you get that in all kinds of different stuff. You might have called de feijão, which is a bean stew, which is so good, right? Or you have feijoada, which is this bean stew with meat and all kinds of beans and all kinds of stuff in there. And you have it with the farofa powder on top and the rice on the side and maybe fried banana in there. Oh my God, it's so good. But feijoada is like the national dish that's here. But honestly, rice and beans play such an important part of the Brazilian diet. And it doesn't matter if you're rich or if you're poor, rice and beans are something you're gonna have. And this is one thing I do see a lot of tourists make fun of, and I've done it before too, is they kind of laugh about, oh, what's for dinner? Oh, rice and beans, what's for breakfast? We mix it up a little bit, beans and rice, you know? And so don't be surprised if you're on some tour that rice and beans does pop up quite often, but don't disrespect it because everybody loves the rice and beans, the Orosa Fijal, when you're here in Brazil. So what are other mistakes you see tourists make in Brazil? Let us know in the comments below and have a great time here in Brazil because it is maravilloso when you come to Brazil. The people are great, the food is great, the weather's amazing. But yeah, remember to put on the sunblock multiple times so you don't end up purple like me. Bye from here in Brazil.